This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are drinking some Sound Growler offerings as we talk about Half Acre, Hopewell, and preview some of the events happening this May. All that and more on this week's episode. Ew, these last three weeks are weird. You, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because you know, you got a cork popped out, boop, it just flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You never go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad. What's up, man? I'm Nick White. And... He has resin. (laughs) And on the seventh day. (laughs) We are post-Easter, post-420, and it's still dank out there. Man, you know, (laughs) this is about the perfect Easter 420 beer, man. Um, Yeah. This dude's got a pipe. All right. This is Jesus. This is resin art, man. Your boy, (laughs) Cesar Borgia. Um, oh, sorry. This is Sound Growlers. He has resin. Their 420 release, um, which happened to fall on April 20. We happened to fall on Easter Sunday this year. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's wild, man. Right. It's uh, actually really. It's kind of cool art, though. Right. Uh, I made it out there and picked up this bottle. We'll talk about that in a minute. We also have some cans of the Orange Haze, which we drank previously on the show yeah. when it was in the 16 can, 16 ounce cans. Oh. And right. I believe they were the cans were orangier. For some reason, in my head, I'd have to look back on our Instagram. But these are now twelve ounce six pack cans rather than four pack uh, sixteen ounce cans. Orange haze, man, the official, the official beer of the Loose Key Studio. That's the, that's the colorway here. The orange, and orange and black. Like, look at how, the, the, with the he has risen and the orange haze, it's basically this skull smoking. And yeah, these are some dank looking beers. There's a theme here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna sip on this. You already were drinking this. I happen to have both it. of these. Yeah, I happen to have it. You know, I don't know what else Sound Growler does, but they do that orange haze really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I always get that. And then, um, you know, it was and then come on, we had to get here. It was risen, you know. So, but that was it, just in and out. So I don't really have like a Sound Growler story. Okay. Because yeah, I made it out there. I took the trip you, out there. You went out there. I went out there. Uh, well, first on that same day, the four, the Friday. That this was released, I went over to uh, Half Acre for oh. their like uh, Daisy Cutter 10th anniversary event. Decades. Yeah. So we did lunch over there on Friday, and I was drinking the Smoking Daisy that was on uh, tap, and not a smoked Daisy Cutter. It's it, not. It's their Smoking Gull, like hazy pale ale mixed with Daisy Cutter, basically. I was kind of hoping that it was so a smoke daisy. It was a Roush beer, right? That's what I was hoping. No, but oh. it was it was good. Okay, it was like a a more tropical daisy cutter. Right on. You know they do a good job of um, you know, keeping daisy cutter because you know you look at um, now the two thousand nine right for 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 a half acre, and you know you at that point you oh, goose is yeah, goose is the only one that's oh one of the few that are older is goose. And they killed a lot of the beers that they first started with, right? right? You know, I even think they killed Honker's Ale this year. Honker's Ale's like only draft only and only at their at their pubs. Yeah. So when you look at a beer like Daisy Cutter, like they did a good job of like, you know, giving it tributes over the years, right? And and, like, and, and variants, and right? Just keeping it alive. And it, but it was a killer beer from the jump for sure. But even even their first three beers that were their core beers. What was it, Gossamer and maybe like a... They had a brown ale. What was a brown ale? It, it was, was called hate, uh, Half Acre Brown. Yeah, so it, even out of their But it was beers. like contracted. Yeah. So Half uh, half Acre survived, and Half Acre Daisy Cutter survived their mm-hmm. first three beers. Right. This, uh, it's just a... It's impressive. It's impressive that it's lasted this long and that it's still, it's still this good and that everyone's still jacked about it. Yeah. Um, I saw uh, Johnson Surratt over oh, there. Right on. And then uh, Phil McFarlane. And so it was pretty happening day over there. Those are some, um, those are some Chicago beer vets right mm-hmm. there. And then I went next door to get my four pack, sold out. Oh, so you're at Lincoln? Yeah. So why I made the mistake? I usually eat my lunch, have a beer, and then I go over there and pick up my beer as I'm leaving. It backfired on me this time, and the and the guy 
Ah, you don't need to tell someone who just came over from, he didn't know where I was coming from, but like, we sold out 10 minutes ago, he says. And it's like, I don't need to know the time. Like, don't, don't do that to me. You were fucking around. Yeah. But it's such a big operation these days that I wouldn't have expected it to go. Even seeing it online, it's like, Hey, we're out of we're out of four packs. Right, and I was kind of surprised by that because they do so much volume. Right, because I've gone over there uh, after work on Fridays for some of the releases, and they're available. But yeah. these four packs it must not have been as big of a run, or the demand was way up there. Now there was a quad. I saw that. So the the I want to say the four pack was Daisy, yeah. then like Galactic. Right. Right. And then smoking. No. No. Smoking wasn't in there. I, I thought it was. Oh, I yeah. didn't think and it was. And then the quad. The quad. I thought that was the four pack. Maybe. Um, well, did you try the quad? I guess that's what I was I there, didn't really. try the quad. You know, right. it's lunchtime on a Friday. Oh, yeah. Not going to not gonna dive into the quad. But uh, someone else got regular Daisy, smoking Daisy. You're already drinking. You might as well. I don't know. Well, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't see what the big... No. Just wait. Um... Next, next, looking it up, double checking. I didn't think the smoking Daisy was in the four pack. Double Daisy, you're yeah, right. Yeah, so it was double Daisy, you're Daisy, right. double Daisy, Galactic Daisy, and Quad Daisy. You're right. Smoking was not part of no. it. Yeah. So, so that's why I had to do the smoking Daisy because it was a draft only kind of thing. Yeah, that was good. So then, that evening, I went out to Sound Growler. I went. Oh wow! Across the town. <laughs> The whole region, man. Yeah. Uh, I went out to Sound Growler because I, I wanted to pick up this beer. I wanted to try this beer. I got there, um, I don't know, it was like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. It was packed. like, And I was by, I was just by myself. Yeah. So I just go to a bar, order a beer. I don't remember what I got, like one of their pale ales. And then I'm just kind of sitting. I like how they have their ledges with the windows. They're all like... Uh, pad it so you can sit on them and put your beer on like a yeah, barrel they're like tufted leather. yeah so i'm just i'm sitting there by myself tufted. just you know messing around on my phone writing some stuff and so i'm just hanging out drinking some beers there and it's getting rowdy in there like oh, it's yeah. just like i got a good space a lot of a lot of different people in there a strange mix there was a guy and a girl with matching uh buns what's a bun like the hair it's like a hair bun a guy uh, and a girl they had a matching uh, bun so, <laughs> I was just people watching. You were, you were tempted to get your, sh- your shears. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and chop his butt. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I had a couple beers there. In hindsight, I probably should have just did the one, grabbed my bottles, and went over to Hailstore. Right on. But I did two beers there, grabbed my bottles, and went home. Yeah. They lean heavy on, like, the, uh, they lean heavy on the IPAs there. Yeah. Which, you know, I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I like their space a lot, too. It's one of the few spots I go to where I, bl- I want to say, like, the front door it's like full of stickers, right? Yeah. Like you got the handle and glass, and the glass is like covered in stickers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're just blasting whatever metal they're yeah. feeling that night. They were selling shirts of the He Has Resin, mm. which is a ridiculous shirt to walk around in. <clears throat> the Bible and... thumpers are going to whip your ass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that was my Friday. That's a pretty solid offering there. Man, that's a proper Friday right mm-hmm. there. My Fridays are usually low key, like, you know. Try yeah. to go hard during the week, and then Fridays is like you coast. All right. I just get it all done on Friday. Yeah, then busy. I get yeah, busy on Friday, man. Relax on the weekends, especially with Easter. You know, there's family time and hanging out with that. Right on. Right um, on. Saturday, I did uh, pick up some cans of the new release from Energy City. Okay. They're Mango Lassi. Mango Lassi. Now, these are probably two packs. Two packs. So they're now doing two packs. So that's kind of what they want to do and keeping the price point under $10. Right on. Two pack tall boys in the can. Yeah. I dig it. And Mango Lassi is pretty tasty. Um, uses a cardamom in it. And it's got some interesting flavors. I have one more can. Maybe we'll open that up for a beer review here. Sounds bizarre. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. But it was fun because I took it over to my uh, my mom's house. My uncle was there. He's a big Energy City fan, and we had three different offerings from Energy City. We had the Mango Lassi, the Mango Nawi, and the Peach Nawi. Oh, right on. So we were, you that, deep. That's a crew that um they work they work their way quite. They're very comfortable in the area of Hayes. Yeah, yeah, they do a good job of like adding. The, I love their whole the whole spectrum of the ones they're doing. Yeah, but that's more stout too. Oh yeah, that beer. Whew, that beer's good. 
Cheers to Bemiscuous, man. I, I walked in there one day and saw Energy City on the board, and before that, I had no idea who they were. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, they're doing some good stuff. So look for that. That Mango Lassi isn't even out yet. It might be out by the time you listen to this, but it's coming out. Shy Beer Guy on RIG was saying he likes the raspberry. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I, I did try the raspberry. All right, um, I haven't had the raspberry. Yeah, the raspberry solid, too. Nice. Cool. Uh, what about you? You were drinking Sound Growler. You didn't really go hang out there. What no, else What else did you get to? Out, um, uh, open bottle to get the uh, the latest release from Phase 3. Which of course mm-hmm. is Sean Moore's or Sean Sean the Brewer Sean Sean from Moore, I think his name's Sean Burns. Yeah, okay. I just called him Sean Moore. Yeah, this is third project. Sean Burr, Graham Moore, and now Phase Three. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, this was, these were mixed four packs of um, Protocol and Marmalade, uh, both hazy offerings. Okay. What'd you yeah. think? Um, they were solid. You know, I actually um, was more partial to Protocol because Protocol mm-hmm. had. We talk about that white pepper kind of rye spice bite that we like, and that's it's faint, but we like it in La Juice. Okay. Right? And this was kind of similar to that, where, you know, Protocol was like that, but Marmalade was kind of smooth, easy, more of uh, one note, and if it had more note, it was just, just kind of, you know, tart and sweet, kind of hazy fruit. Mm-hmm. But this one had like a distinct little bite to it, okay. which I personally dug a little more. Yeah, so that was my, that was my jam. They were both solid, though. Oh, what the what a four pack run you those? Um, what is it? Normal, like, I like know, 15? Like, well, I was like 17 probably. Okay. Like maybe 17, 18 bucks, I think. Yeah. Oh, man, the guys at uh, – somebody got something lifted from their store, which sounded kind of shitty. I want to say it was like the crew in Downers Grove, the crew that's named after like the Illinois colors, like Orange and Brew, I want to say. They posted that, you know, someone stole some of theirs. Stole and, some of their beer? Yeah, someone stole their Phase 3. At – um. At at open bottle, there was over an hour. There was like an hour. Whoa! Uh, there was like seventy five people in line at the open bottle. Um, Brumiscuous said they sold out pretty quick. Um, I I happened to be at the Benny's on Grand downtown, the really small Benny's. Yeah. They said they got rid of theirs in like eighteen minutes flat. They had like four cases. They were done super quick. Damn! People are going nuts already a lot for of it. People were blowing through their through their stash really fast of this stuff. Mm. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I think. You know, they're taking the buzz. I've never seen anything like this, man, where a dude just has a buzz at these breweries, and then he leaves the brewery, and the buzz follows him. <laughs> you right. Know, it, it's it's a strange phenomenon, man, but people love it. And, you know, I'm kind of here for it, too. I mean, you know, I just I just like the I like the excitement around it. No, it's fun. It's just it's weird, right? Like, uh... It's weird as fuck. So, because I know, I know guys like Crazy Ass Jose, he, um, you know, he would take a bus out to Sean Bird. To go to Ram to get these beers, you know they had the growler that kind of looks like a genie bottle. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, and the beers were always good, like Karma and you know whatever else he was pouring out there. Yeah, and I, I mean I stood in line about a year ago, like three straight days at more for Chicago Craft Beer Week, getting all the uh, the hennas, all the henna releases. I mean, I mean, I mean they're good, so that's <laughs> it right. all starts there. Like yeah. these beers are fucking good. <laughs> and then um, but yeah, even like with this Fobab stuff, like he when he when he won Fobab two years ago now, you know. They more was open for what like six months. Yeah. When that happened, you know, it's just a strange. It's a strange phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. So you you already have to figure, Fobab or whatever festival might happen or wherever he's at during Chicago Illinois Craft Beer Week, there's gonna be a line for his stuff. Yeah. And ninety percent of the people haven't even had it, right? Or even have heard of this yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder what's next from them. Yeah, and like where they were, because um, I think they're brewing up in like Lake Zurich or something, right? Okay. So instead of having you wait in line at, Sh- at Ramberg Sham or more, you know, Ramberg Sham, mm. <laughs> instead of it's the exact opposite. Now they're just kind of they're taking the distro route and you know sharing the love at these other spots yeah, where you're spots. probably gonna like you're gonna drop some coin on some other stuff too while you're waiting on their stuff. For sure, yeah. cool. So fun stuff, man. Uh, so yeah, so he has risen, and then uh, the Phase three stuff. Nice. Yeah. Fun week. Fun weekend for Chicago beer, man. Um, shout out to Lagunitas, man. I picked up some of that um Where's Waldo? Mm-hmm. That's like the original four twenty drop was Where's Waldo. Right, right? yeah. Um eleven point seven percent triple IPA from the good folks at Lagunitas. It was money. Um it that, was it that was, beer knocks you on your ass. Dude, it was like it kind of blurs the line, right? Because it's like 
it's a happy barley wine at that point. It's a twelve percent IVA, you know. But it's so it's it's nice. It's that might have been my favorite thing I drank this weekend, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Comes in a nice little got the little purple top on it, got the little purple and and white. Yeah, label. I remember drinking that. Last time I think I remember having it <laughs> was at uh, the beer classic, the Chicago beer classic at yeah. Soldier Field. Like they had a little VIP tent area, Lagunita sponsored and they were pouring that beer. So yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of partial to them. I've had some good times at that brewery, man, mm-hmm. out in uh, what 18th and Western. Yeah. So I really enjoy getting the because that's my first Lagunitas in months. Well, since we had the Willitized uh, Coffee Stout. Yeah, I haven't. It's weird. I haven't even thought of Lagunitas until I saw you post that photo, yeah, and I was like, of... Oh yeah, Lagunitas. <laughs> right here in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> right here in Chicago, it's a massive, like, 700, back-to-back, 750 barrel from, 50 barrel fermenters. I got to get my words right, man. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. think they got, did they get lost in the the haze craze? Because they were, their beers were already, like, that juicy, dank, fresh hop kind of thing. Dank as fuck, for sure. The West Coast IPA at 6%. But then, then uh, but low. it was bitter and kind of maybe harsh on your palate to some people. Yeah. But then haze happened. Big arrow that West Coast style is like big aromatics with like a nice booze kick, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not afraid to have a bitter finish. Like that was the West Coast style. And they were right there at the front of that. But yeah, to your point, like a uh, little something, something, seven and a half percent, cloudy. And that's been around for since as long as I've been in beer, you know? Yeah. So yeah, they were kinda ahead of the curve. All right. But I they just haven't point. had anything new, right? And no. that's uh Maybe hurting them in the beer nerd world. They stick to the script. Um, I noticed that this is under there because they do have this moniker about the one hitter series. And initially it was like the bombers were going to be the one hitter series and it would be like Chicago land only kind of thing. Okay. But this is under that series now. And then I think a lot of their drops that happen under the one hitter kind of fall flat as far as like, well, I mean, I'm not saying fall flat is how where they taste, but just as like, man, are we getting around them? Is there a momentum around them? Do we know about them? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, right, we just don't know about them. Yeah. Okay. And so many of their beers are still in bottles, right? I know there's the purple one that's Shit, in cans. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. The 12th of Never is their only canned beer as far as I know. Right. So that's got to be hurting them, too, at this point. Like, uh, we're drinking this. He has risen in a bottle, and it was a special release, so that's whatever. Most of the time, it's cans and if it's I'd not say, cans on this show eight out of ten yeah it's probably you, cans you're questioning picking up a bottle at this point even a six-pack bottle fair mm-hmm. fair even even uh monsters 22 years old now even they went to cans yeah <laughs> right Some, come on logan is it also seems like the image of them lends itself to cans very well like yeah just who Lagunitas is, they should have cans, right? You would mm, think. Eh? Uh, that Waldo is is money. I think I got it twice this weekend. Yeah. It was really good. Nice. Um, cool. Yeah. Oh, shout out to uh, Hopewell. I think uh, last week when I left the show, I made my way to Hopewell. Okay. And then, um, yeah, they had their offering from Uppers and Downers on, which I want to say was like a sour coffee ale. And then they had the clover leaf. Which was a straight up raspberry. It was a raspberry with uh, gin botanicals, and it was also a wild ale. Oh, so, so I was like, well, which one should I get? Should I? Because I didn't get that at Uppers and Downers. Yeah. And she said, with well, no hesitation, you got to get the Clover Club. So I got that. Um, mm. Fantastic. Uh, Kettle sour saison with uh, gin botanicals and raspberries. Oh, okay. And then I got the uh, got the IPA. Yeah, they always have some interesting kettle sour on. Yeah. I I don't mind kettle sours. I just haven't been in the mood for sour beers in a long yeah. time. Um, I like. I definitely like to mix it up. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't know what we drank last week, but I was like, give me the sour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like their sour. And I, I forget, like, uh, and we just posted that. Yeah, what did we drink last week? <laughs> on, the, on the show. Oh, we drank the White Van. Oh, yeah. We drank White Van. Cool label. But then, um, yeah, theirs and Rev's, the uh, the press, Freedom of Press series. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think sometimes, it was, like initially, t- kettle, kettle sours, like you just picked up on cereal graininess and all of them. I was like, I don't like this shit. Yeah. But I think the Hopewell one and the Rev one, I mean, I enjoy those quite a bit. Yeah, you're getting more of the fruit in there. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. Well, that's a pretty, uh, pretty solid week there. Anything uh, stand out? Best thing you drank? Man, what's the best thing I drank this week, man? Um, 
I'm going to I'm gonna have to look. <laughs> I got to look back too. Um, protocol was really good. I thought uh, Waldo was my favorite thing. That's the first thing that comes to mind was that Waldo. I really enjoyed Waldo. Okay. Oh, man. It's like seeing an old friend, man. It's like seeing a friend from college, man. Yeah. Like, where you been, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, I work at Douglas Park now. I don't even know. I, I, I want to say, I feel like it could be this Orange Haze that might be the... Orange Haze is a close second for me. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, cause this, is it six packs? Yeah, six packs. Um, yeah, my, no, you know what? Up. It was that smoking daisy. Smoking like, daisy. That was just so easy to drink. Yeah. It was just, it was nice. I took my kid to um, I want to say Odyssey Fun World, but it was like Hollywood Park. It's just an indoor park, okay. right? Hated every minute of it. The pizza sucked. All they got is fucking Modelo on tap, right? <laughs> and these bullshit margaritas, you know, and indoor indoor bumper cars, right? You know, fucking kids and moms everywhere, you know, and you know this shit sucked. But I smuggled in the last four of the orange haze. Okay. And it mellowed me right the fuck out. I was able to be a dad. So <laughs> <laughs> with no reservations. So orange haze is ranking high, man. I go one A and one B. Okay. Orange haze was um was rather clutch for me this week. Oh, right. Sounds good. All right. So then coming up this week, really we have like a more of a month preview. Some things that are like Stuff that's coming up. Bill and my sure. craft beer week's happening. Tickets are already sold out for a lot of these man, things. That's, but yeah, that's impressive. You man. might be able to hop on Craigslist or uh, one of the other sites and find some. Yeah, because the first time my first Fobab, it was sold out in a secondary market. Met him at Beer Bistro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Illinois Craft Beer Week, man. Um, you know Maplewood and Saint Laurent have a beer for this party. Uh, this is May thirteenth. Right. Okay, and we'll probably circle back. That yeah, of course. we'll do a probably a full Illinois Craft Beer Week preview. I wanted to spotlight Maple Maplewood because I love the Maple Room, um, <laughs> or or their lounge, right? The Maplewood Lounge. Oh, but then uh, the first 100 people get a specialty glass, and when I went for the anniversary party, there was this serious like pimp fucking chalice with it was like a a globe. It was a globe wine glass with a gold rim. It was just as stellar, and it kind of had a, um, it wasn't a, it wasn't. What am I trying to say? It almost looks like window panes in the glass. Oh, like stained glass? Uh, nah. No? Okay. Uh, Frost it? I'll come, we'll come back to All it. Right. It's a very nice glass, so I would encourage everyone to get this glass. I think I'm going to be at that. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, beer in the glass. The general admission tickets are all sold out. Um, this is the opening ceremony, of course. This is year 10 of beer in the glass. Oof. And the uh, VIP tickets are all that's left, man. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, during Illinois Craft Beer Week, Alarmist is going to have a can release of uh, new, I think it was a Citra Le Juice. They're doing a variant of Le Juice. Le Juice variant. Yeah, I want to say it was like DDH Citra. I think yeah. you're right. I'm here for that, man. Right, because uh, Le Juice released last, in cans for the first time, last Illinois Craft Beer Week. I didn't know that. I went up there. DDH I, Citra, 6%. Yeah, I went up there for the release. I got a glass. Picked up a four pack when I came out. So crazy. One year anniversary. Yeah, man. And cheers to them because they just celebrated two it. years at the tap room. Right on. You want to get in on this uh, risen? Uh, you can go for it. I right, got cool. some more. Nice. Um, and then what else? What else we got? Illinois Craft Beer Week or, um, or right you know, after is. A lot uh, of folks are announcing their events mm-hmm. just yet, but you know. Um, a tradition like no other down in Munster, uh, Indiana, and I think we're both going to be at this. Uh-huh. Um, Three Floyds, Dark Lord Day, the only day of the year you can purchase the Dark Lord. You can okay. worship at the altar of, <laughs> of the Dark Lord. Now, we talked about it last year. It was the same weekend as the Moore release and as Beer in the Glass. Yeah. Um, the most aggressive weekend of my life. It was really, it was intense, man. <laughs> It was intense, dude. I was walking around Bug, and I think I saw somebody, and they were like, go somewhere quiet. It's beer in the glass. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm really bugging out at, at Bug because of this thing. But yeah, uh, Dark Lord Day, man. Uh, what did you say? 50 breweries yeah, 50, showing up? I think like 50 guest brewers. Um, of course, a whole lot of metal. Okay. Um, and variants on tap. Well, last year there were variants on tap for the first time ever. Really? There wasn't ever before? No. I mean, like, you could get them all on tap, all outside. Oh, because they were in the tap ro- or yeah, in the had... restaurant or whatever. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, and when they closed the pub, I think they started doing, like, um, when they did everything outside, all of them weren't on tap. And then when you went inside, 
there were like very few variants back then, right? Okay. And now there's like last year, I want to say there's like it could be like seven or plus variants. That's too much. Yeah. Too many. Too many. You know, I just remember having like a, a full wine glass, getting a double pour cam trail, just cruising that bitch. Okay. Yeah. Darkler days here, man. Yeah. Now, this beer always like, what's the word? Like, Dark Lord is what it is, right? It's an imperial stout with like uh, Mexican dessert sugar and uh, dark matter coffee, mm -hmm. right? Um, the party and the bottle share in, always supersede the actual beer. Like the beer is kind of an afterthought. I yeah. Think, right? So I have not been to Dark Lord Day since the first year they started with the, the groupings. <laughs> that was the last oh, time I like, was there. No. I might have went one time after that, and I didn't have a ticket, and I just went. But the last time I bought... So you Brad Chimaluski. You're just like, hey, I'm going. I just hung out. Okay. So, and then the last time I bought it was the first year they introduced the A, B grouping. Oh. Or C, D, whatever. Like, what happens now? Do people still wait in line? It's, yeah, it, it's a love-hate relationship with Floyd's. You know, like, like, all right, so... Like I would be upset if I couldn't go, but then when I go, there's there's things that I might not like about it. Okay. You, know, you don't like everything about Dark Lord Day, but then you kind of want to be there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's part of it because like it, Floyd's has always been there with you, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like they've always, you know, it's always been like a brewery that you can count on. Right? Yeah. Okay. Over, over the years. Huh. So. All right. I don't know. We'll see. Our tickets are they sold out? Yeah. Dark Lord Day tickets are done. Oh, man. You could just show up and hang out in the park across the street. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Across, just told the, the, across the street. Right? If you, like, make your own mini Dark Lord Day there. I'm here for that, um, I'm here for that Hangy, that uh, B.A. Vanilla. In the, in the park? I'm here for that Marshmallow <laughs> Hangy in the park. And for, everyone, for everyone that's listening, <laughs> I'm the bald dude with the, with the gray beard, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, barrel aged uh, vanilla bean dark lord man never fails. Okay. Yeah, and they always, you know, I'm curious to see. They haven't released variants yet, so I'm curious. Right. Curious to see what's going on, man. Nice. Yeah. It's uh, May 19th, dark right. lord day. Nice. And then later, uh, is uh, Ultra Fresh in May or is that June? I want to say it's June 29th. June 29th. Also, yeah, man. Cheers not to, during man. Illinois Craft Beer Week this time. No, I'm kind of surprised because that's always um. It's always like, a highlight. Like really. a midweek kind of thing. So, uh, hop review, guys. Ultra Fresh 2019, uh, 629. Yeah, and they're moving it because they got their own space now. Mm -hmm. um, now it's over not too far from District Brew Yards and On Tour and everyone else in the brewing district. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, they're, um, yeah, they got their own space. We said that this is Ultra Fresh 4. 4. Yeah, so all beer is packaged within five days of the party. That's yeah, cool. and uh, that's West Town. They're calling that West Town. Yeah. yeah we, should, we, should, we should get them on and see what they've been up to, man. For Ultra Fresh? Yeah. yeah. I think we had them on uh, a little preview prior. Yeah, June 29th. Right. Ultra Fresh. Ultra Fresh is a good party. Like, I know I missed last year, but I went two years ago, and it was always at... Um, Rightway Signs, which is like Fullerton and like Damon. Right? Yeah. Um, so it's like Rightway Signs kind of sat at the end of like a dead end block, but then the block ended because the highway was right there. So you got this really cool scene of like, you know, this block party at the end of the block with the expressway behind you, and then they've got their building. So, and then Rightway Signs is like drawing all this really cool stuff on the wall. That was, it was a cool scene. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what they do this year. Yeah, yeah it should be neat. I like the hop you guys, man. For sure, yeah. We'll get, right, we'll get them on the talk. We still have to figure out dates for our interviews with uh, Old Irving. Yeah, what and, are we doing, Brad? And, uh, and Cruz, Cruz Blanca. Blanca. Now we got to go to Cruz Blanca. And the District Brew Yard, uh, epic 35 people. Or I don't know. What is it like? At least 10. At least 10. I think we're breaking the record on that one, man. Oh, uh, one more thing, man. May May Festiversary, which is the Beguile and um, oh, Dovetail that's, Party. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so just like the one. Oktoberfest party. Okay. Um, but lots of beer, music, food, games. I want to say it's um, it's their anniversary. It's like uh, I think it's Dovetail's anniversary, right? Um, yeah. 
it might be, I don't think it's both of their anniversary, but they just kind of combine it and kind of make it a, make it a party. Yeah. Uh, of course, they're neighbors right there on uh, Malt Row. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they usually block off. Sometimes there's ski ball that they they pull out their ski ball machines or and put them in the alleys. Like I said, there's bands, food trucks. The empanada cart is always there because it's it's at uh, what is it Beguile at least once a week. You can usually count on that. Yeah, you'll see a three legged tacos there. This is May 25th and May 26th. Okay. I went to something over there, man. Over the summer, and it was like a full-on block party. It might have been that, and they, unless it was the Oktoberfest party. No, nah, this was summertime. They party down. They party down over there. They they uh, they enjoy themselves over there. Nice, cool. Uh, so those are all the events we have for you coming up right now. Uh, definitely, always can releases, beer releases happening at all kinds of breweries around town. So check those out. Uh, the only bit of beer news before I get out of here is Waybacher. Waybacher? In Pittsburgh. What's that? They man? are they are now uh Duns. They have uh I believe it was last year they had sold a bunch of their equipment or sold a majority stake and now they are completely completely shutting down. Right on. Way I'm I'm not familiar with Waybacher. Yeah, they had uh some good like barley wines and like quads mm. a long time ago, but I don't know if they ever came to the Chicago land market, but No. Another one bites dust. You know, give me a quad any day, man. I, I can, um, Rocheford, you know, mm. it was one of the first, one of the first beers that really kind of got me into what was going on. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, so that sucks. It sucks to hear people losing their jobs, you know, people shutting it down. That's, that kind of sucks. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of that, man, Ballast Point, they, uh, they had plans, uh, two facilities closed down. Um, there's a brim facility in Southern California and then a brew pub in San Francisco. Well, you've been talking crap about the Chicago one. I was, just, I mean, well, <laughs> they were a very good host to us, right? And their space is nice, and their food is delicious. Um, we and their were, beer is good, and their beer is good, right? Like, yeah. and then you know the whole idea of like you know the the menu where you you know off the menu items where you just mix all these different sculpins and they have these cool names. Like, there's a Shit. subculture there. You know, we dug that right, and it's next to the publican, right? You know, oh, but then they um. Oh, but they didn't have guest drafts, so that was kind of concerning. I was just like, are you being a good neighbor, you know? Around around these parts, on the surface at least, <laughs> all these breweries are like, you know, pretty good neighbors. Like, you'll be like, yeah, Cruz Blanca is like, oh, hey, Marcus, you don't have a can- you don't have a bottling line? Don't worry about it. We'll bottle your beer. Right. You hear about these guys, you know, sharing ingredients and collaborations and, you know, all this kind of shit, right? Um, oh, so that it was it was a bit alarming. I'm like, man, aren't fucking sculpins, no fucking guests? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? Oh, but that's not the story. Um, yeah, they closed two facilities, man. You know what was kind of disturbing about this, man, is that they said um, Constellation Brands, which is based in Chicago, right? They um, they had to write off on their, their year end statement. They had to write off 108 million dollars as an impairment charge. Right. Impairment charge. What right. So it's this term they made up to essentially say, hey, you know, we overpaid for this. For the brewery? For, we overpaid for Ballast Point when we bought them a few years ago for a $1 billion. Well, that sucks for you. Too bad. Yeah. So. Make up some term. That's. that's a, investors to like. <laughs> $108 million impairment charge for mm-hmm. brewery trademarks and essentials. We thought they were better than they were. That's. We, they were not who we thought they were. That's like what anyone uh, who's been a divorce is like, that person changed. Like, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Constellation <laughs> Brands. Yeah, man. Um, wow. They, they, they sold for a bit. Now, they were a homebrew shop that, you know, started the brewery. Yeah. And then they also kind of like, um, they, they got into spirits, too. Right, so they're making they're making beer and spirits in Southern California, and Constellation Brands showed up and said, "Hey, here's a billion dollars. What do you say?" Yeah, how much did Constellation Brands to give Lagunitas? No, I uh, Heineken. Heineken it that. was the same actually, but it was staggered. So the the initial deal was, "Hey, we sold half our company for 500 mil." Okay. And then a couple of years later, they came back and said, "Oh yeah, we, we sold the other half." <laughs> yeah. Well, now Constellation Brands on that that weed money. <laughs> so they're, they're all in that cannabis beer. So yeah, so they, sh- that's, they should have went with Lagunitas and you know combined forces there. Yeah. So there's that man. That's, People uh, are shutting down. Yikes! All right, 
We should get out of here before we get shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAT. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Uh, website, ChicagoBeerPass.com. All the episodes are there. Beer reviews on YouTube. I think we're going to have some uh, Mango Lassi going up there soon. Right on. Look for that. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>